Welcome back to another Power BI 3 minute tip. If you're liking these quick Power BI tutorials, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell for more content. In today's video, I'm going to share with you a really cool technique that allows you to dynamically add or remove measures from a chart. And this is different than some of the dynamically switching between measures in a chart videos because it actually allows you to specify uh, multiple measures that you want to add to a chart. For example, if you look at this that's already set up, if you don't have any of these measures selected, it shows all the measures. Or if you just want to show labor, or you want to add this third party measure or this fourth measure, it dynamically allows you to select that measure and show it visually. So it's a really cool technique, um, definitely has a lot of viability because it is so dynamic. So let's go ahead and step through this process and how you can set it up for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and come over to this other workbook. Uh, this is a sample workbook that Microsoft uh, provides. It's called the Customer Profitability Sample. So I have chosen this because it has a lot of built-in measures. So I've gone ahead and selected three measures over here, and we are going to replicate that functionality, that really dynamic functionality. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a manual table, and we're going to call this table uh, underscore measures, and we're going to name this column selection because this is going to be our selections for the measures and we're going to give them names that are somewhat intuitive like we'll call this first one labor because this is sum of labor cost variable measure the second one's going to be called uh, revenue and the third one will be third party so once that's in there let's go ahead and click load bring that into the data model and once that's in we're going to create a slicer with that new selection um, table we just made so let's go ahead and find that measures selection we'll throw that into a slicer so now we have our slicer that doesn't really do anything yet so next the next step is to create basically three new measures we're going to create a measure for each one of these and it's going to have to determine if this slicer selection is selected for that measure so the way we're going to do this is very similar to my last video or one of my last videos was basically how to create a uh, default slicer selection so if you haven't checked out that video i definitely recommend it um, it goes into depth on how this works um, we'll take that one step further here um, so if you really want a good background go ahead and check out that video so let's go ahead and get into that if we right click and click new measure I'm gonna create a measure called labor and basically the way we're going to harvest the information of whether or not this labor is selected here we have to use the count rows function and we're gonna count the distinct of the filter I'm gonna put on the next line we're gonna filter the all selected uh, measure table and uh, filter for where the selection equals uh, labor. So stepping through what that does is we are taking uh, all of our selections, we're filtering it down to where it's just labor and we are getting a count rows of the number of instances of that so let's go ahead and click OK and it might make more sense if you see it in a card visual so that labor so far is showing a 1 when labor is selected it also shows a 1 when nothing selected because when nothing is selected basically everything selected but if we click on revenue it shows blank or third party but if we now click on labor now it sees that labor has been selected so that's exactly how we're harvesting these selections so carrying on, let's go ahead and make this into a variable for later use. So if we say var logic test, so we'll set this equal to one and we will return logic test. So you see that it says true if labor is selected. If it's not selected and others are selected, it will show false. So that's a really cool way that we can ba basically see um, if it's selected. So we will return instead of logic test we will use an if statement and we will say if logic test which is basically the same as saying if logic test equals true if it is true we're going to want to pass in whichever measure we're dealing with which right now we're passing in the labor measure if it's false we want to pass in nothing so we pass in blank and that's the entire measure so basically we can say when labor is selected it will show labor over here and now we have to get rid of our measures and throw in our own labor measure into the values so when labor is selected it shows the labor measure when it's not selected it 
does not show the labor measure. So that's pretty cool. So we have to go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other two. So let's go ahead and copy it all, throw it into a new measure. Uh, we're gonna change the name to revenue. Basically we need to change where it's selected and we need to change the, uh, the measure name. So the measure was sum of revenue. We can go ahead and throw that into our chart as well. And we see that when revenue is selected, it shows up. And finally, let's go ahead and add one more measure. Oh, I need to select the entire measure. So we'll control all, control C, throw it into the new measure. And this one is called third party. All right, so let's call it third party. And the selection is called third party. And finally, the measure that we're using here is called third party, sum of cost third party. So click enter, let that think, throw third party into this graph here. And now our, um, our new chart is complete with all of our new measures. So if we select multiple, it will show us all of the measures dynamically. Or if we deselect all of them, it still shows all of them. It's only when we select one, or basically don't select all of them, it will be exclusive uh, of the ones that it does not select. So if we select labor and revenue, it will only show us the labor and revenue. This also keeps all of the selections on the legend, so you know your options for what you can choose. So I hope you really like this tip. It's super dynamic and allows you to really specify just the measures that you want to see in your chart. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next Power BI 3 Minute Tip.